So hello, fellows. We have uh, just we have, we have we you have just missed the arrival of the AGC. So Jimmy is with us, and Mike has all his contraptions, and we have the AGC for a little while, so we can work in the lab, which will be way more efficient than what we were doing last time in the the hotel room. And we have the whole crew, a few journalists, and Carl, and. Uh, official photography and movie making that actually the people that know how to real really make movies and like me all right so we're going to open it up all right ready <coughs> that satisfying pop did so, the dsa swipe anything <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the module that is causing us the most trouble that's the one big okay. fault we have here. It's pretty, huh? Yeah. Okay, so usually we just you start packing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Ken has already set up shop here and he's working on his rope emulator back there. And is interface the PCB way circuit and getting it ready to plug it into the AGC tomorrow right <laughs> we can plug it in whenever we want it just won't uh, work <laughs> Carl has set up here this is the display and keyboard uh, replica of what the astronauts used uh, the keyboard needs a little work it'll go back in there but basically they would punch in things and see glowing numbers here and Mike is setting up shop over here. What do you have? Oh, with the schematics in hand. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we need that. In Houston, we had reached the point where we needed to bring up memory, uh, both fixed rope used for the code and erasable core, which would be the equivalent of today's RAM. This is all part of Tray B, and we are now taking all the memory support modules out for test. Unlike the logic modules from Tray A, these are mostly analog modules in charge of generating, amplifying, shaping, and steering the complex high current pulses needed for addressing core memory. Although both based on ferrite cores, erasable core and fixed rope are very different, so there are different support modules for each. Unlike the others, this current switch module used for erasable memory addressing is potted in a very hard black material. Spoiler alert, this is going to cause us much grief later on. Sense amplifier modules like this one are in charge of reading the faint data signals back from the cores. They are very special. To increase density, the designers decided to use analog ICs. They were made by Fairchild and they were the first such analog ICs. You can see many of them packaged in the round transistor-like cans with many leads. They surely represented a technology leap for analog design at the time. One thing we couldn't do in Houston is uh, because I didn't have the microscope is inspect the pins here. And we'll need access to those if we want to connect anything to the AGC. And it's not looking too good. Yikes, these are looking downright terrible. Uh, unlike the interior of the AGC, which was hermetic and stayed pristine, this connector was lacking its protecting cover and was left to accumulate crud for 45 years. Finding a way to clean them is imperative if we want to connect anything to the AGC. For comparison, this is what a good pin from inside the AGC is supposed to look like. Well, so much for this first try. That did not do diddly. While I meditate on a better contact cleaning technique, let me pay a visit to my friends to see if they are faring any better than me. So Ken, what are you doing with your googly eyes? So right now I'm trying to fix some problems in the core rope simulator boxes here. Um, these boxes were used to feed software into the AGC for ground testing. Unfortunately, they're not built to the same standards as the AGC, and so our connectors are encountering a lot of problems with bad contacts, 
I'm testing addresses. So the Arduino is stepping through six addresses in sequence. And so this rectangle should proceed down the column in order as it is now. Yeah, that's huge progress since this morning. This morning we had like plenty of rows that didn't work. Yeah. We have been battling those dipsticks forever. It's basically finding a problem, tracking down the bad contact, bending the pins, getting the contact working, and now it's actually starting to converge. So Ken appears to be doing fine, but Mike, not so much. Mike is looking yeah. sad. Yeah. What, what's happening? What's, hap what's happening, Mike? Uh, we are measuring some open circuits in our current switch module, which is the one potted module we have other than the uh, memory module. So pin 117 here is a diode. 18, 18, this one should also be measuring a diode, but we're not seeing it. Oh. And the problem is that it's a uh, potted module, so if we right. want to make a repair in there, yeah, we have to that's going to be challenging. Wh which module is that? This is current switch, current which switch. has the magnetic cores that uh, store the addresses during the memory cycle. They flip in one direction to drive current through the X and Y lines in one yeah. direction. Yeah. Then we can read it and they go the opposite right. direction. If you watch the core memory explanation video, you know that current has to be inverted in the address wires during the write cycle following a read. This is the module that does exactly that. And apparently, it's broken. It's many, many times the same circuit, right? Uh, there's two different types of circuits. Okay. Here. There's the, the top side switches and bottom side switches. Mm, I think we should work. Uh, uh -huh. But they're, they're I think we should work. always... A diode, a core, and two transistors in, in some configuration. That's a major bummer, so let's see if the Disky fellows are doing any better. O open heart Disky surgery yeah. looks to me. So this one in particular, I think it's poorly aligned. The Okay, it's it looks like the they are doing more or less fine. Mm, but in the meantime, it it's, it's got even worse with Mike's module testing. Away and up. Oh, and the bad thing. So yeah, you've been through the whole current switch module now. Mm -hmm. And you confirm there are two of the circuits that don't work? Yeah, there's two open circuits from what we have tested so far. We haven't tested all the pins. Uh, huh. But uh, on the the set lines for the course, uh, there's two open circuits. And, and you have a, you have a, call it a conspiracy theory of why you think that might have happened, which makes a lot of sense. Yes. So what is it? <laughs> so the, um, the module here has a part number uh, 2003026-021. And if I look over here at the assembly drawing for the computer, which specifies the dash numbers for all the different revisions. Our AGC is dash 071, and according to the drawing, we should have a dash 011 current switch module, but we have a dash 021. So the fact that it... So, so, so hold on a second, you're telling, you're telling <laughs> me that you, you, kn you know from this drawing what our module should be. Right, and it is not. And this not. one is not the right. module it should have been. So between that and the fact that it's the only module that is potted, other than uh -huh. the erasable memory, uh, it, it makes me think that this may have been swapped out uh, because this module wasn't working. They may have taken the working one from our AGC back in the day and replaced it with this one that wasn't working. Right. Which came from, you know, who knows where. <laughs> Uh, that would make so much sense. That would explain like two or three things at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Why, why it's not working, why it's spotted. Yep. The bad news is that we really should, now we will, we will have to repair that one. Yes. And it's spotted. It is spotted. But it's not as bad as the core memory. No. So the, no. the core memory, just, just forget it, right? It's yes. way too small. So the core used in this one is way bigger. Oh, you have a picture. Excellent. So this is what it looks inside when it's not spotted. And can you point to the components where you think the fault is? Uh, let's see here. Uh, so our problem is going to be either in, there's one. So it's CR16 here, there's mm -hmm. a diode hiding under there. Uh -huh. um, so this is, if we could remove the potting somehow, it's large enough that we could yes. potentially repair it. Uh, but we have to remove the epoxy. 
Okay. Polyurethane foam. Polyurethane. So. Better. Polyurethane is better? Better epoxy. Epoxy is harder. Mm. I mean mechanically, but uh, chemically. Mm. Which one's more resistant? Because okay. epoxy, I know you can remove it. Uh, polyurethane, I don't know. Yeah. Here we go.